Now, all engines have sensors and switches on them. Sensors for water temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature, turbo boost, speedo pickup, and switches for electric cooling fan or maybe electric water pump. And it's pretty likely that you will need to adapt the sensors to your engine. Uh, and there's a complete range of adapters and fittings available that will help you do that. But before you start buying your adapters, the most important thing is to be able to identify the threads on your sensors and switches. And we're going to show you how to do that. There are three tools that you need. A digital caliper, a set of TPI gauges, that's threads per inch, and there's a set similar to this one in our tap and die set, and the tapping chart from the back of our catalogue. There are a whole range of threads, both imperial and metric, uh, both parallel and taper threads. So the first thing to do is to measure the diameter of your sender thread. A parallel thread will have the same diameter all the way along its length, but a tapered thread will have a larger diameter at one end and a smaller diameter at the other, and you can measure this with your vernier caliper. A digital caliper will have a button on it that allows you to switch the reading from metric to imperial just with the press of a button. So you should have a pretty good idea from measuring your thread whether it's an imperial or a metric thread. The actual diameter of the thread will always be just a little bit under the nomination of the thread. So this M14 thread actually measures 13.8 diameter. The next step is to measure the thread pitch. Imperial threads are measured in TPI, that's threads per inch, so it may be 18 TPI. Metric threads are measured from the crown of one thread to the crown of the next, so it may be 1 millimeter, 1.25 or 1.5. Choose the thread gauge that exactly matches the profile of the threads on your sender. This one is a metric thread, 1.5 pitch. You can then refer to the chart in the catalogue and you can identify the thread if it's a UNF, a BSF or a metric thread by the pitch of the thread and its diameter. The exceptions to this rule are NPT and BSP, that's National Pipe Taper and British Standard Pipe Taper threads. Those sizes refer to the ID of a tube with that thread on it. But all you should need with BSP and NPT is the pitch, the TPI. Now if you're lucky, your switch or your sender will screw directly into the thread on your engine. But if it doesn't, then you're probably going to need an adapter like these brass ones here. There are hundreds of combinations of male and female threads and we stock a lot of the common ones, but it could be that your particular combination just isn't available. So we're going to show you how to make one. OK, let's suppose that the union you're looking for has an M22 male thread and a half inch hose tail. But you can't find one, but you can find an M22 blanking plug union and a half inch hose tail with a different thread on it. So we can make the one union out of the two of these. To join these two together we're going to use a process called silver soldering. Now, it's not soft soldering that you use on wiring and it's not welding. It's a process where the two surfaces are fused together with a layer of silver which bonds molecularly to the surface of each piece giving you a very strong joint. This is a rod of silver solder you can get it from most model shops and this is silver solder flux and we're going to make a very thin paste with a little bit of water and a little bit of flux the silver soldering relies on having two pretty flat surfaces together it won't gap fill so we're going to cannibalise this half inch union by sawing off the thread that we don't want 
and then filing the surface flat for the file. Now it's critically important that both surfaces are clean so we're going to use a bit of wet and dry just to clean up the surfaces. Perfect. Now this is a fire brick. It's going to prevent you from burning your bench. So we're going to dip one part in the flux, get it covered and sit it on top of the other part, making sure that both surfaces are nicely evenly coated with plenty of flux. Now we're going to warm it up with a butane torch. Get it nice and central. It's important that you don't get the joint too hot. You'll see the, the flux begin to melt and it will start to flow around the joint. And you can start to feed in a little bit of solder which will, again will flow on its own all the way around the joint and all the way through the gap by capillary action. Just keep a gentle flame, warm it all the way around until it's flowed and filled the joint. And then drop it in a bucket of water, which will clean off the flux and give it a quick wire brush. And you can use the same process to make up any combination of parts you need.